Hello and welcome to this week's News Bulletin Roundup. At the International News Channel, let's take a look at the headlines. Pakistan's counterterrorism police states that 11 Islamic State militants were killed in a raid. Canada has agreed to permanently resettle 5,000 Afghan refugees that the United States brought to the U.S. bases in the Middle East and Europe. New York taxpayers could be footing the bill for Andrew Cuomo's defense against sexual harassment claims. The Taliban gains control of Kabul airport as the U.S. withdraws from Afghanistan a day ahead of schedule. Accidental child gunshot deaths have risen by 31 percent in the United States during COVID-19 pandemic. New Orleans, Louisiana was victim to Hurricane Ida, resulting in flooding, damaged buildings and four deaths. Moreover, hundreds of thousands of residents are left without electricity. Canada's GDP shrank by 0.3 percent in the second quarter of the year. To begin, Pakistan's counterterrorism units recently raided an Islamic State militant group. They were acting based on intelligence in the district of Mastung. The police said that the grenades, suicide belts and assault rifles were confiscated. More notably, a shootout began which resulted in deaths of 11 militants. In Canada, 5,000 Afghan refugees are airlifted by the United States to their bases and will be taken in and resettled in Canada. These refugees will be part of the 21,000 Afghan refugees that the federal government has committed to taking in. Approximately 100,000 refugees have been evacuated from Afghanistan since August 1st by the U.S., Canada and other nations. A large number of these refugees are temporarily living in the U.S. bases in Spain, Qatar, Kuwait and Germany. As a result, the U.S. is urging allies to resettle these refugees either temporarily until the U.S. can resettle them or permanently in their countries. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has told the media that Canada and other Western nations are putting pressure on the Taliban to allow foreign citizens and Afghan nationals who worked with the United States to be allowed to leave Afghanistan on civilian flights. The coalition completed its withdrawal from Afghanistan. This marked the conclusion of an historic military evacuation, but not the end of our efforts to support the people of Afghanistan and especially those who are availing themselves of the humanitarian pathways that we have created for those Afghan refugees who are hoping for a better life in Canada. Turning now to the United States, former governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, has recently resigned from office following an investigation into sexual harassment claims levied against him. The investigation concluded that he sexually harassed 11 women. Though, Kumo claims that the women have over-exaggerated or misinterpreted his actions. One woman, Lindsay Boylan, has stepped forward saying that she will sue him and any co-conspirators that allowed this to happen. Other suits seem likely as well. This could mean a hefty bill for taxpayers since the state has agreed to pay up to $9.5 million in fees for lawyers investigating Kumo's and his administration. However, this does not include fees for Kumo's own private attorney, who is being paid for by his campaign committee. Whether or not the state will continue to pay the $9.5 million will be determined by Governor Kathy Huckel, Kumo's successor. started asking me personal questions. I was uncomfortable with that conversation. So I stood up to leave, and he walked across from his couch and embraced me intimately. It was not just a hug, it was an intimate embrace. Returning back to Afghanistan, the United States completed its withdrawal in Afghanistan on August 30th, 2021, a day ahead of schedule. On Tuesday, August 31st, a Taliban spokesperson declared victory over the United States on the runway at the airport. The Taliban has made it clear that beyond August 31st, foreign military will not be tolerated in the nation. While the Taliban has insisted that people are free to come and go from the nation and that it wants to keep a commercial flights operating without security issues being resolved, it is unlikely that commercial airlines will agree to travel to the airport. Moreover, as a result of the chaos that ensued at the airport over the last couple of weeks, the airport remains in disarray with critical infrastructure destroyed. As a result, it is likely that the airport will not be fully functional for quite some time, a fact that the Taliban blames on the U.S. military. 
In other news, accidental deaths by children handling a gun have leapt from 98 deaths in 2019 to 128 in 2020, a trend that has only gotten worse as of now 259 unintentional shootings by children have resulted in 104 deaths and 168 injuries in the United States. At this rate, the numbers seem likely to surpass that of the previous year. Every Town, a U.S. nonprofit that advocates for gun control, says that this increase can be attributed to a mix of factors such as lack of child care, record gun sales, which occurred during the pandemic, and a spike in first-time gun owners. Meanwhile, the United States is facing another major issue. New Orleans has been hit by Hurricane Ida. The hurricane has resulted in the death of four individuals, flooding, lack of electricity for hundreds of thousands of people, and building damages. Some of these buildings were hospitals located in the path of the hurricane. In these hospitals, parts of the roof were torn off, water began to leak out of the walls, and the emergency generators were the sole providers of electricity. As a result, some hospitals in Louisiana were required to evacuate dozens of patients. Even more, this hurricane comes at the 16-year anniversary of the devastating Hurricane Katrina in Louisiana. In good news, the hurricane has since weakened to a tropical storm on Monday and is expected to continue to weaken as it moves through the United States. Turning now to Canada, the Canadian economy has shrunk by 0.3% between April and June. According to Statistics Canada, the total value of goods and services sold has declined in the second quarter. Overall, the end of June 2021 has seen Canada's economy decrease in size so that it is now 1.5% smaller than it was in February 2020. Although there was an initial recovery from COVID-19, which began last summer, this is the first time since then that the economy shrank for an entire quarter. That's all for today. You're watching the International News Channel. I'm Julia Cosby. Remember to subscribe, like, and turn on the bell notifications so that you don't miss out on any of our latest content.